Welcome tonight to our jail plate experience. Um, this is, I believe, our fourth session um, for the jail plate experience where we just get together um, a group of people and we have um, sort of a topic or a technique to cover and um, we just walk through all sorts of um, techniques and uh, tips and tricks and that sort of thing so we can all learn together. Um, my name is Lori Williams. I am the administrator for Mixed Media Mad and the Alcohol Inc. Arc community. So uh, the topic tonight is Alcohol Inc. And so this is, you know, pretty near and dear to me and um, something that I, I love a lot. I do a lot of Alcohol Inc. work. Um, I have for many years and I really like this forum where we get together and create together. I like meeting new people and getting to know it. Um, people. Um, tonight we have some familiar faces and some new faces here and I wanted to give um, those people a chance to introduce themselves as well um, so that you're not just hearing my voice and I believe several of them are actually going to be creating here live with me tonight. So that's exciting. So you're not only going to learn from me but you'll maybe learn some tips from these ladies as well. Um, so Claire, why don't you introduce yourself first? everyone. Um, my name is Claire and I am in Australia. I'm originally from Wales in the UK but I came out to Australia 17 years ago on holiday. I'm still here um, and um, it is actually 9.34 in the morning so it's not the evening for me. I'm ahead of time so I'm in the future. <laughs> um, I'm a visual arts teacher in, in a high school in Canberra, Australia and I've been a visual arts teacher for about eight years. I also have my own business, which is called The Authentic Soul, where I do therapeutic art workshops with um, small groups of people. So I love jelly printing. It is my most favorite thing to do with the students, although I'm so scared that they're going to cut into the jelly plates. <laughs> so I only bring them out <laughs> when I can really trust my students. Right. But um, I'm really looking forward to creating today with all yeah, of you. It's a very, um, the gel plate is very therapeutic. Um, yeah. So is alcohol ink. I, I, and we'll talk about, you know, some of the safety things with alcohol inks in the classroom environment. Sometimes there's little challenges there, depending on who, who your participants are. Um, but alcohol ink is a lot of fun too. Have you worked with alcohol ink on a gel plate before? No, I never have. And I couldn't find any alcohol inks. So I've made my own. I hope I've done it right. <laughs> we'll okay, see. <laughs> well, we will try. And if, and if it doesn't work, feel free to just jump in with your acrylics or whatever you normally work with. Yeah. Um, Thank you. We're just here to have fun. Um, Terry, why don't you introduce yourself for people who might not know who you are? Hi, I'm Terry Jones. And I've been doing alcohol inks for almost as long as Laurie. We were some of the first people to kind of jump in on it. Um, I teach alcohol inks and mixed media and watercolors and um, recently built a studio and um, I'm enjoying myself with uh, doing Airbnb experiences for people with classes, which has been a lot of fun. And uh, I love the mixed media and uh, I'm ready to create along with you. I will put my camera back down when we start creating. All right, great. Um, Pam, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Pam Schmidt. I'm a mixed media artist as well, fluid artist, instructor. Um, I use that as my release in my real life uh, law enforcement for three decades, uh, crime scene investigator. So I need art in my life because <laughs> all I ever see is bad stuff. Um, I help uh, Lori every now and again, teach some classes for the mixed media page. And I love it. And I love being here. I'm just going to try and help her moderate tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> you know how crazy it gets. Yes. Um, Eva, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Eva Zhang T. Catch, and I'm a mixed media artist and started with Alcohol Inks. And I've been doing them since about, oh, 2016. And um, so it's my first love. I've dabbled now in acrylics and encaustics and watercolor, but... Um, I've been really focused on alcohol inks recently um, quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to this because my jelly plate experience so far with acrylics was not ideal. And I'm hoping that um, it'll be better with the inks. I just, I guess I need practice. <laughs> okay, great. 
great. Um, so I, I see we, we have Mary and Gail here. They don't have their cameras on. Do, you, do either of would, would you, would you like to introduce yourself? Vera wants in too. Oh, Vera wants in, okay. We'll let her in. And Claire, while we're waiting, what does my tomorrow look like? <laughs> winter in Australia so oh. it's very frosty oh. outside I would I love that anticipate that you're going to be warmer than us <laughs> I'm in I'm in Florida so we're in the high 90s <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, horrid <laughs> winter Gail you want to introduce yourself Sure. I'm Gail Anderson and I've been doing alcohol inks for a couple of years and I've done watercolor and acrylic and sewing and just about everything. And I did try the jelly plate last go round and it is not easy. <laughs> I had nothing I could share. So <laughs> hopefully this might be better. Yeah. So last, so the last, so last time, last session for those of you who may not have seen it, we did, um, image so, transfers which is not the easiest thing to do on um a gel plate and, and there's you know a, a, a certain set of rules that you have to follow to make it work and you know different environments have different success and that sort of thing um, you make it look easy <laughs> well, yeah. I, I practiced a lot let me i'm going to just put that out there i did when i first sat down it was not easy i took a lot of a lot of time practicing and figuring out exactly what works but I did what I did um, demonstrate what I know to work, and I know that's something that a lot of people like to try to accomplish. So if you can always go back and rewatch that, it's in the um, Mixed Media Mad group, and it will be posted on the Mixed Media Mad website soon. I'll also post it um, to the YouTube channel as well. But um, and but the replay's available, and there's a lot of good information in there. Um, before that, we, we talked about mark making and stencils and, and, and that kind of thing. And that was strictly with acrylic. And that was a really, um, that was a really good session too, because we shared a lot of techniques there for people who are just working with acrylics. So tonight's focus is on alcohol ink. Um, so I've been, I'm, I've been an artist working with alcohol ink since 2012. Um, and I do more realistic type work, not a lot of the abstract stuff that you see out there. All of it's beautiful. Um, my stuff tends to be more realistic um, in nature. And I love it. I love the fluid nature. And I got into it as therapy um, because I, I was diagnosed with lupus years ago. And my um, doctor's recommendation was to find something to release the stress in your life and it just so happens that I ran across alcohol ink right about the same time that that happened. It was kind of fortuitous. And here we are all these years, nine, 10 years later. And, you know, we have a huge community. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of fun things. And I'm, I love alcohol ink more today than I, as than I did when I started. Um, so I'm excited to share what you, cause I also love jail plate and mixed media. So I'm also, also kind of, you know, all over the place with that stuff. Um, and as many artists are, you get bored with one thing, and you want to do something else, and then, you know what I mean, you come back. And, and I'm so, that's so me. Um, and that's why we started Mixed Media Mad, because, you know, some people couldn't work with alcohol ink, um, because, you know, one of the things I want to tell everyone that, as a caveat of working tonight is alcohol inks can be toxic. And so you want to work in an environment that is open and you have some really good airflow um, because you don't want to bring it, breathe in those fumes too much. Um, when you're working with alcohol ink itself, it's not so bad. It's when you start to add the isopropyl alcohol or some of the um, blending solutions or some people work with ethyl alcohol. Those, those tend to be, um, more, the fumes from those tend to be a little strong. So you need to, if you're working in those types of environment, you may want to make sure that you're wearing um, a respirator and also gloves to protect your hands, not only just to keep them from getting messy, but, but also um, to prevent the, the ink from getting into your hands. And so I always like to put that out. Um, I did just, if you are interested in alcohol link and you haven't checked out alcohol link and you wanna like see what's available and what things you can do with alcohol link, um, we have the Alcohol Ink Art Community website. It's alcoholink.community in the browser. And we um, 
I just put out a, um, a, an essentials, beginner's essentials guide, just so that people who are just getting started, it's what you really kind of just need to know to hit the ground running with alcohol link. Um, and it's got some really good basic information. That's um, a free download on the website. Um, there is a link for that. We can share it in the chat. I don't know if Pam, you have that. You can share it in the chat. Um, and I will share it over at the, um, I will share that over on the uh, YouTube. Let's see. So if you, if you're interested in that beginner's guide, you can go and download that. Um, also, just before I jump in, I want to mention that uh, we just announced this week our Alcoholic Art Conference for the fall. And that it, it is, it, this is our 10th conference that we've done when the alcohol and art community. And if you haven't had the opportunity to participate in one of those conferences, we have a lot of fun. This one is gonna be amazing. We have 12 presentations. We've got a live paint along. There's door prizes um, from our sponsors. Uh, we're going to um, have an art exchange for anyone who wants to participate. We can get together and exchange art. Um, everyone sends each other a piece of a unique piece of um, original artwork, and it's a lot of fun uh, to receive a piece of art from one of your fellow attendees. We have a lot of fun, so check that out as well. Um, that's the Alcoholic Art Conference Fall 2021, and I'll also paste a link in, um, to that um, somewhere. And I just want to get all that out of the way. Um, is there anyone on the screen who hasn't introduced themselves yet and would like to do so? Vera. Good morning, everybody. Depending on Hi, where Vera. you are. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, in case you don't know who I am, I'm Vera Worthington. I'm an Alcohol Inc. artist, but um, I've been having some fun with the jelly plate and alcohol inks and you know I tried some acrylics that were about 30 years old and um I need to get some new ones so until that <laughs> happens I'm excited for alcoholics because I have a ton of alcoholics so um, <laughs> hi everybody and it's great to be here I needed this art therapy tonight oh my god so stressed this week and now I'm just gonna relax Great. Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. We're in it. And, you know, with, with the gel plate, if you work with the gel plate all ever, you know, it's all a giant experiment, right? So you go in with the tensions, but you don't always know what you're going to get until okay. you pull that print, right? Well, with alcohol ink, we're adding a whole nother level of unpredictability. <laughs> because well, alcohol inks it, it, in and of themselves are unpredictable. Um, but they are also very fun and also um, really cool to use on a gel plate. Um, with that said, there are some things that are different that you need to know um, when you're working with um, alcohol ink on the gel plate. First off, if you're not familiar with, with um, alcohol ink, it's a transparent medium, meaning um, you can see through it. So um, when you put it down on the plate, you might not auto, you might not really see, unlike acrylic, you kind of see the colors and stuff that you're gonna get, you don't really know with alcohol ink what you're gonna get. Um, and then also because it's transparent, in order to pull a print, um, at, you have to wait till it dries and then you have to place in a, a white acrylic over the top to do the pull. Um, because if you look, the alcohol ink dries really, really fast. And if it dries on the plate and you try to do a pull, which we will do, um, you have to do it while it's wet or else you're gonna have, you have to have something to pull it. The other thing other than white um, acrylic that you can use is um, a, a gel medium or a gloss medium that's, that dries clear. That works really well as, um, as well. And the beauty of the, media, of the, the uh, gel medium is with the alcohol inks, you can do layers. Cause normally when you work with alcohol inks, you can't really layer it that well because as soon as you put alcohol ink on alcohol ink, it explodes and, and does all these things. But when you, if you do layers on the gel plate, then you have a barrier layer naturally between them. So you can do layers to, to make things more interesting. We will try to do a little bit of that tonight. Um, the other things really important, alcohol inks are dye based and they will stain your plate, not all colors, and you know, sometimes some colors you'll be able to clean off, um, but not all colors. So I recommend having oh, wow. and have a gel plate that's dedicated just to your alcohol ink work. 
Um, you will see when I switch um, to my work table that the gel plate that I am using is very stained. Um, and it's and it's always yellow, but <laughs> if, you, if you happen to use Ranger's Dandelion, it's gonna stain, just give it up. Um, what I did is I just have a five by seven plate that I dedicate to alcohol ink. So, yeah, so I really like to see those nice um, stained oh, plates. <laughs> Because Vera, that really looks great. Vera. That looks like a crime scene filter. <laughs> Pam, <laughs> Pam, we're creating. We're not on a crime scene. You're right. I know. Here. Well, someone already sent me a crime scene joke here now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. Well, we have uh, we have California in the house, and <laughs> yes, you don't have to be on Zoom. They're on Facebook. You can just watch and learn. And Maryland, Florida. Saskatchewan. So we're picking up people everywhere. Yeah, I see a few people on, so on cool. as well. We got someone, someone else from Maryland, Missy Dorn. I'm from I'm in Maryland too. Where are you? I'm I oh, am in um Ger boys, right outside of Germantown. So a lot of people from a lot of places. That's awesome. Okay, so back to um what you need to know before we get started. Um with the gel plate. Uh, with alcoholic, you could nor you normally work on um, non-porous substances, but when you work with the gel plate, it doesn't matter. And all the demos that I'm going to be doing tonight will all be on plain copy paper. So every, you don't have to worry about having a non-porous surface with this because you're going to be doing the, the ink work on the plate and then you're going to be pulling it using acrylic and it doesn't matter. It's not going to... Um, sink in or be affected by a non-porous medium. Um, an added bonus to that is that the colors for the alcohol ink won't fade because alcohol ink is a pigmented um, product. It's not considered light fast without treating it and doing a lot of hoops and, and downs afterwards. Um, but when you use it on top of acrylic, it's, it's a little more um, light fast. So you don't have to worry about it um, fading in, as much. We have a question, Laurie. Yes. Uh, someone has asked, do you ever make your own gel plate? I do not. Um, a lot of people do, and that's fine. There's a lot of recipes out there for it. Um, I think I might have a recipe in the gel plate experience website, but I need to look. Um, but all you have to do is go, go out to YouTube and search, you know, make your own gel plate. There's tons of videos and stuff out there. I don't because in, I don't, they're not that expensive as things go, as art supplies go. Um, so I, I just buy, and, and a lot of times because I do um, demos and stuff, I work on the smaller plates, although I have, I probably have 10 gel plates of all different sizes, but my favorite to work on when I'm doing demos is five by seven because it fits in the camera screen so much. And because those aren't as expensive, I have several of those. Um, like I said, I have one dedicated to alcohol ink and but th with that said, um, there's nothing that says you can't go out there and make your own gel plates. And there's a lot of instruction out there to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an option if you're into to, to creating. Some people make their own alcohol inks, and that's fine, too. Um, although I found that in the long run, it's, it ends up being, um, you know, less trouble to just purchase them. They seem at first to be, at, you know, a little bit of sticker shop with the cost because these tiny little bottles that, like this size bottle, you know, it's probably three or four dollars, but it does last a long time and it goes a long way. Um, so that's, you know, just something to consider. And I've just found that over time I've built up a nice supply of them. I use coupons whenever I can. I look at Rangers um, coupons. Um, Jacquard has a nice set that's really affordable. Um, and if you have like a coupon at Michael's, Michael's sells to Jacquard. Uh, it, um, set pinata set of alcohol inks and you can use a coupon so you can get started pretty inexpensively with alcohol inks that way um let's see do, do, do. the rest of it i'm going to probably be talking about as we go um missy replied with i am from harford county near baltimore but we lived in germantown while my husband was in the navy oh okay cool <laughs> so she knows where i am <laughs> okay so I'm going to point my camera down and we're going to get started. I know you guys are all um, hoping that we'll <laughs> hurry up and do that. So I think I've covered all the like getting started things you really need to know. 
and some other things that I will show you as we uh, go through some of the demonstrations. And I put together, just to keep us kind of on track, I put together eight, potentially nine different techniques that we'll do, that we'll do with the alcohol link and, and try. So I am going to switch down my camera now. And um, that means that I won't be watching the comments and stuff. So um, it, are Vera or Pam, are either of you watching the YouTube comments too? Or Yes. Okay, good. So that's all, all this technology. Isn't it fun? Oh, yeah. Very. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's also helpful to have people helping me watch. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Fun. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let me switch my camera. There we go. Now the first, the first thing that, so you can see my, my plate here is pretty messy and it's pretty yellow. So very well used. I work on a, um, like a glass trivet. I picked this up at Dollar Tree. So if you have access to a Dollar Tree at no here in the United States um, or any kind of glass trivet, it really clings nicely to it. And so you can do all sorts of things with it. Um, you can actually turn it over and see what you've got through the, well, if you're careful, um, through the glass, which I kind of like that feature as well. The other thing that you can do is if you were tracing an image behind it, you can put the image behind it and still see it without having the gel plate sticking to a piece of paper. Some people prefer to work with paper. I just like to work with the uh, glass trimmers. I've just found that they work um, quite well. So, Sorry. Yes. Um, Sherry said, can you make it so that we can see just your screen? It oh will my, not let me I on my always, side. I always forget to do that. Hold, let me do that. Let's see. There we go. Yes, there we go. Are. That looks like a big mess, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's going to get messier here, but I'm going to go through a couple of supplies first. We, I have a number of um, bottles of alcohol ink here. Um, these are the new, these are the new, um, two ounce bottles, which are larger than the half ounce bottles that we, we've traditionally gotten. And these are new this year. Ranger sent me a set so that I could do demos for you guys like this. So thank you Ranger for that. And, and I've used them for a lot of demos. Um, so the, these are, these are alcohol inks. These are Ranger brand alcohol inks. Um, Pinata alcohol inks um, are another option. There are other brands out there. There are actually so many other brands now. Um, as alcohol ink has become popular, there have become more and more um, brands. There are um, alcohol ink markers. So a lot of your permanent markers, like your Bic and your Sharpie markers are alcohol ink. One of the techniques we're gonna use, we're actually gonna use some markers towards the end of the evening. Um, the other thing we have are brayers. I um, actually have two brayers for most of what we're doing. The first brayer, this, this brayer right here is what I'm gonna use for alcohol ink. And then I'm gonna use a separate brayer when I use the acrylic. And the reason is, is, is because the alcohol ink and then the acrylic will this color each other and, and cause it to run together. So having two brayers is helpful if you have it. Okay. The first thing that I want to do is I just want to show you what it looks like if you drop some alcohol ink on the plate, manipulate it around a bit, and then pull before it dries. Um, so to do this, I'm just going to take a couple of colors. Let's take, I'm going to take gumball and dandelion, and I'm just going to drop some drops on here. That's the one that's seen my plate, dandelion. The dandelion is horrible. Dandelion will do it for sure. And then you can take your brayer and rub the alcohol across it. I have a, I have a, paper, uh, have a piece of paper off to the right that I can use to clean my brayer off. And then you want to store your brayers with the, um, the back side down. Sometimes I get excited and I don't remember to do that. And then I have some um, five and a half by 11 sheets cut up. I'm real quick, I wanna lay it on top. So what I wanna show you is, see this paper is not as is, is porous. So what happens with this, the ink soaks through, but you can, you can pull a print that way if the ink is wet. 
if the ink is dry, you're not going to have so much luck. So we're, I'm going to show you that real quick. So using the same colors, I'm going to drop some more of the dandelion on here and some more of the gumball. And I've got, and I've got my squeaky brayer here again tonight. Ooh. I like my squeaky brayer. <laughs> well, now it's you. There For those that are still having a hard time seeing Lori, uh, try a speaker view. Should probably just put her on the full screen. Yeah. Um, does that better? No. Yeah, because no, I, I didn't have, try yeah, I have it on speaker view. And then I have I have um let me just make sure that I'm spotlighted. Yeah, I'm I'm in the spotlight. So okay. Yeah, if you put on speaker view, you should see pretty up close and up front each of them. So, so what happens now is, is the ink is dry for the most part. It's still not 100 percent dry. But I want to show you because it'll pull some of it, but it won't pull much of it. See what happens? Nothing comes up. Well, this is the area that was still a little wet. So in order to pull this print, I have to use um, some a sort a medium. So my when I work with alcohol ink, I like to use white because the alcohol inks are transparent. And if I use, say, a yellow or any other color, it's not, especially a darker color, it's not going to show up. Um, it only shows up with the bright colors if you use a white acrylic. The other option you could use is you could use an acrylic medium, like a gloss medium or matte medium. I happen to have some gloss medium, which I'll be using tonight, um, but I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to pull this one with titanium white. This is just the Liquitex Basics. Um, it is a heavier body. I'm going to use this brayer to go over it. And so you want to like a thin coat over the top. And while that's still wet, I'm going to use the same one that I had before. While this is still wet, place your paper on and make sure that you have contact all over the gel plate. I have, this is called a Baron. You can use your hands, works great. Circular motions to ensure that you've got a good contact over it. But if you want, if you have a baron, you can use that and that just gives you a nice, even smooth contact over your whole piece. And then you just pull your print. So this is what that first print looked like. And it looks, I'm gonna turn my lights on see if that helps a little bit. Does that wash it out too much? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, mine didn't work. <laughs> okay. Mine actually worked for a change. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yay. All right, so that's yeah. that. And we might come back and do another layer on this one when we get to, to de demonstrate layers, or we may pick one of the others that we do. Ooh. So that's fun. That's just basically putting eat down and pull and and pulling a print. So the next thing I want to do is put down ink and then add some texture to it. So I am going to use my. I, let's change up the color scheme a little bit. Usually, yeah. I don't like to change. I recommend just working with like two colors, and then when you get comfortable with um, your color theory of your co if you if you are comfortable with your color theory then maybe three colors, but you want to make sure that you keep it sort of simple because you don't want to end up with mud. Or maybe you do want to end up with mud. That may be what you're going <laughs> for, but usually that's not what I'm going for. <laughs> and so I'm going to, I'm going to actually, this time I am going to use my dandelion again, and I'm going to use um, a glacier blue. And I'll put that on this, this end of it. Bonnie says uh, she normally uses a matte medium from Liquitex. Okay, that, that's fine. That works too. So using my sprayer here, I'm just going to roll the ink across and uh, just a little bit here. Now, as you can see, you can't really tell what's going on. So I put blue down on this yellow stained plate and it looks green right now. Uh, I don't know if you can tell that on the screen. Let's see here. I'll cover up these. No, you can't really tell. 
That, that's the best we're going to get here. Let's see if I lift it. So can you see that a little bit better? Mm -hmm. but yeah, so it looks green and, then, and you can't see the yellow at all. Um, so a couple of things that you can do here to reactivate the alcohol ink and give it some interest is you, you can um, spray a little alcohol ink on it. And if you have a little spritzer, and so I have a little bottle here. I don't recommend doing this unless you're wearing a respirator, but I'm gonna take my chances here. And just a little spritz. I don't know if you can see what starts to happen, but it starts to bubble up and cloud up and do some really cool things there. Um, but then again, it's wet now, so I need to let that dry. The other thing that you can do is you can pour some isopropyl alcohol into a container. And dip a brush in here, a dirty brush, then it'll work with the alcohol. And you can just tap it onto the plate to, to activate the ink um, in different circles. The other thing you can do is you can take another color of the alcohol ink um, and you can tap in. Let's see, do I have a well palette here with me? I'm sure I did. Actually, I'm just going to use another container. I'm going to put a drop of this yellow in here. And I take my brush and dip it in, and then I'm going to take the yellow and dip it onto here to, and to create some little dots. And wherever I tap the yellow in, it will separate out that blue. Just go around and make dots all around. So that makes some interesting effects here. You can paint with it on, on the plate if you want. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can take your mark making tools. And kind of the cool thing about the alcohol on the plate is, is you, if I were to take my brayer when it's dry and rub it across the alcohol ink that's dry on the plate, it would the brayer would lift up the alcohol ink um, in, some, in some cases. Um, it'll do the same thing with mark making. So I can take some of my mark making tools and I use a lot of different things from around the house, like a piece of cardboard. Um, this is a piece of embossed uh, paper, card, card stock, embossed card stock. Lori, there's been a couple of comments. If you can have you focus, I don't know if you could change your focus. Oh, let me look at it real quick. I don't know if your work surface needs to be up higher to the camera. It's I can, I can see you fine, but a couple of people are saying that they can't. Oh, uh, it's it it looks like it is on autofocus. I don't know. I think your gel plate itself looks out of focus. Uh, I think that's what it is. It's the gel yeah. plate is just so used. So yeah. anyway. I can come here with this and make some marks with the mark making tools. And it will lift some of that ink up if I press it into it. And then I can use, you know, I use a bunch of different things. I use things I find around the house. If you go back and watch the one we did, I think it was April or May, it has um, a whole bunch of ideas with mark making tools. And a lot of them that you probably have around the house. So I can try maybe zooming in a little more. Does that make it any better for anyone? No. I think it's the plate. Because everything plate. around here is focused just fine, I think. Blurry. It's the plate itself, I think. It is. Everything around here is pretty clear. At least it looks like it when I look at it on screen. It's really bizarre, but that's just I kind of the way the plate is looking because it's it's Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> okay, so I'm adding a little bit of the Liquitex basic white. 
gonna roll it all over the screen. Wet. I'm gonna pull a print from that. So you can, you'll be able to see oh. all of the different mark making and um, texture that I put in there, um, either by spritzing or uh, by using some of the mark making tools that I have. Anybody else on screen doing, doing the same things? Trying, but not being successful. But I didn't bring mark making tools. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, use a brush. Use a you know whatever. Use whatever you have. Use, use my brush, scissors. Alcohol. So you can see that that makes some really um, cool effects. See the little bubbles. We got that from from these little um, diamond stickers that I picked those up at the Dollar Tree as well. Um, and then you can see all the little texture I've get in here by spritz, spritzing with the alcohol. And this is where I actually drop the yellow um, off the brush and it ex expanded. There's a lot of things that you can play around with just doing texture with alcohol ink. These, these are really cool backgrounds for um, you know, painting on the foreground or using a collage. Uh-oh, <laughs> this one didn't work so well. Well, let's look at it. Well, the first one I did was, it, it kind of came off pretty good. I mean, it's pretty dark. Oh, wait, hold on, I'm gonna put you on spotlight, okay? Okay. So the first okay. one actually worked pretty well. Okay. And then the one I just did, I'm, I'm still having trouble with the, it's the acrylic paint again, because this is what I got. Okay, so let me, I'll tell you what, what the problem is. This is a great um, thing to bring up. You're putting too much paint on top. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah, you need a thinner coat of the acrylic. Okay. Yeah. So should I should I try to wipe it off now? You know, you can pull a ghost print from that. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. All so right. if it's dried already, add just a little tiny bit more of acrylic on top. Okay. Or if it's still wet, you can put another piece of paper on and do another pull. Okay. Yeah, still, it is a little wet, so, yeah, I mean, that, so it's that dry. Is, that's, that will, I could tell when that happens, it's usually because you have too much of the acrylic on top. Okay. You know, yeah, the first one I did right, so, okay. That's yeah. exactly what I just did, Laurie. I put too much on top, and I got this one that looks like it's white, and then I just pulled the next one right off, and it's right. So sometimes when you when you have too much on top, you actually can put a, a piece of paper over the top and just lightly brush it with your hand and pull it off and then put another one immediately on top and do the pull and it'll come so out. That's hard. what happened with this one. That's exactly well, you know, Terry and I just did it for you. So you would have something to yes, yeah. we have something to talk about. <laughs> well the other thing is I grabbed a piece of Yupo by mistake and that does not work at all. Uh, yeah, no, okay, so let me just say that this this I should have added to the beginning of the instruction a lot of times uh, us alcohol ink artists will use a synthetic paper or we'll use photo paper um this it doesn't pull well on synthetic paper it almost resists it yes and all and then if you use photo paper actually just do not use photo paper no. because as soon as you type touch the the glossy side of photo paper with um the gel plate you're going to ruin your plate yeah it oh. bond instantly. And I I wish I had taken a picture of the mangled plate I got the first time that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just a mess. So it was ruined. There was nothing I could do. Just a couple of things. Um, Patricia said that she switched over from Zoom to YouTube and now she can see you. Okay, and good. Definitely a glitch with Zoom presentations. So ah, okay. Issue. Um, Bonnie was looking at all your pictures so that they're very pretty. And Bonnie also suggests to Eva, use translucent white rather than the full on white. Use yes, I, white. I actually do have, so that was from who was that? That uh, Bonnie. Bonnie. Yeah, I was using the titanium white. Yeah, yeah, so I use the titanium white a lot with my alcohol ink because if I wanna get a high contrast, but right. I also have this, that I'm showing here on the camera. So let me 
put yourself back on spotlight. Yeah. Um, this is Liquitex Basics, and um, it is a transparent mixing white. Oh, I don't have that one. Okay. That will work too. I don't use it as much, but I have it here because I'm running low on the uh, titanium white. And what kind of paper are you using? Okay. I am using, for this demonstration, I'm using regular copy paper. You can use um, you can use cardstock, you can use, you know, if you use mixed media paper or watercolor paper, you're going to get a little bit different effect, but you can use any of those, um, those papers. Again, I wouldn't use photo paper anywhere near a gel plate. And um, the synthetic papers like the UPO and the, gra the graphics and the NARA, they're not going to work very well for this. No, they don't. Okay. That was going to be my question, so thank you. <laughs> Okay. I'm still trying to get this this off. I'm still having trouble getting. Yeah. Do you have a, one of the things you could do, Ava, if you're still having issue, did you put another coat of the acrylic on top and then pull? I did a very, yeah, I just did a very thin, 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 thin layer. So hopefully. Yeah, and then make sure you make good contact all over the plate with your with your hand. I'm using that. Uh, yeah, you have a baron. And, and a baron. then do the pull that way. Then that would work. Oh yeah, that that helped a lot. Still awesome. some there, but it's helped. Yeah, so do it. Yeah, just until you get the plate clean, and you can start it again. Um, you can clean the plate plate with baby wipes or a wet paper towel. Okay. Oh, that's better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I had too much white. I think also, Laurie. Yeah. Now I did less, and it's a little better. That was definitely my problem last time. Learning experience there on like how thick you need to have that that layer that layer that you use to do the pool. Well, I was surprised when I saw how little you put on. It right, was it, it, drop. it's tiny. I have the big tube and I use a tiny drop and that five, yeah. on the five by seven. If I, I would maybe use a little bit more than that if I were on the larger plate, but the tiny drop works perfect for the five by seven plate. And if I, for me, if I can't see what I'm working on on the plate through the white, I know there's too much on there. Right. Rolling oh, it off, okay. I keep oh, that's, ro rolling that's a good it way and to look at putting it. my roller yeah. onto the paper and I'll go and stroke it again until I can start to see my plate and what I'm working on. Then I know that it's enough. Yeah, it's coming, I'm just using a, uh, <clears throat> a wipe and yeah, came right off. And so let's just do a couple more with, with different textures. And, and different color. So let's see, this time I will do, um, what did I do last time? I'm gonna do a, the gumball and the glacier together this time. Bonnie thinks the white changes the colors. Um, it, uh, <laughs> really? it might a little bit. Let's see. Um, it depends. I mean, the, I found the titanium white works great, but if you're using like a white, white piece of paper, like I'm using like a bright white, the transparent might give you more realistic color. Yeah. It may not mute it. They do get a little bit muted when you use white. And we'll and we'll do some with the with why don't we use well, I'll use the gloss medium on this next one. Let's see. I need to try that. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, I actually haven't even tried that one either. <laughs> so this time I'm just putting some ink down and I'm just taking my brush to wipe it across. No idea what I'm doing, which is kind of fun. <laughs> right, it is. Sure. It, it is fun. It, that's it's lots of fun. Doing. That's what we're here doing is we're doing some experimenting. And so let me see if I have an old uh, gift card or something that I can use. But before I do anything, can I use a metallic on here or is that going to ruin things? No, metallics actually work pretty good. Okay. Oh. I metallic alcohol? In? Sure. Yep. Just like it's metallic metal. paint. So I'm using an old credit card here and I, you can create textures with it, which is kind of cool. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm like creating texture on the, on the plate. So I'm using, I have some of this glacier blue and I've got gumball up here. And this is while your, your ink is still kind of wet. Yeah. So while it's wet, you can still play with it. If okay. it dries too fast, just add a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the gumball here at the top. Cool. 
oh god this is just the art therapy I need I'm just like doing whatever it doesn't like oh really it doesn't have to look like the dog you know it's like great <laughs> yeah and, and, it, and, and, and most of what you create here is going to be with alcohol like I should say is you know kind of abstract be and it, you know right. think right. of backgrounds and oh, think right. abstract that's that's what I want <laughs> okay so you got so you guys would I, see i just took um a credit card here and uh, i probably have to block that out on the replay so you don't see my account number <laughs> oh, oh come God. on actually that's an old account so i uh, hope so <laughs> you're supposed to use all credit cards Mari. that's an old account oh you know what's really good to use is those hotel keys yeah, that works too. Or you can use a, a you know, gift card um, that, that you've already used out. There's all sorts of things that you can use. You can use a business card. Um, I keep on getting AARP cards. I keep on telling them I'm not that old. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those things. How many do you want to give me? <laughs> okay, and how long do you have to... Now, can I use a... A blow dryer to dry this, or do I just have to wait? You can use you can use a blow dryer, but don't hold it close to the plate. Um, I I don't use one. I just wait for it to dry because the alcohol inks dry so fast. But if you have a very thick coat of alcohol ink, it's taking forever to dry. You're not, you know, you're you're impatient, or you don't have enough time for whatever. Yeah. Metallic um, weren't drying. Metallic on this one. Yeah, so I never use the hair dryer because I don't want to damage my plate. But if you put it far enough away, do so you see how that little dollop that I put on that? That's all yeah. that. And this time I'm using the gloss medium. Oh, I'm gonna try oh, that. The yeah. matte medium would work too. Matte medium, yes, matte medium would work as well. And so I'm gonna take my grayer. So when this when this when you do this pool you'll see it will be a little brighter so bonnie's correct about that um and when it dries the the um the medium is going to be obviously clear because it's you know the gloss i was going to suggest this and bonnie also beat me to it is using when you're talking about the blow dryer using the ranger hand blower instead yes oh yeah Relate some air and for people who don't know what that is this is what that looks like this is a there you go. product and you can, uh, yeah. you can put the ink down and move them. So like we'll do one, we'll do one when we do that as well. Find mine. So is it better to use the gel than like kind of a regular, I have both kind of a liquidy matte medium and then I have a, a gel. So I, you I, can actually I, use, and I, and I should mention that too, like if you don't have a heavier body, or, I like working with the heavier body mediums for the full part. Um, yeah. You can use your uh, acrylic, you know, a craft medium. Craft right. Medium. Just get the, the, the trick is, is not to put too much down. You yeah, I put the gel. I thought that would probably be better given my proclivity to putting too much down. So now I'm pulling this one. Cool. Wow. Nice. Yeah. I really turn off that autofocus that I turned on because dancing. Now, like, I'm, I'm looking at all this stuff that we're all making, and I'm like, ooh, I want to just, like, cut out things on my Cricut. Uh -huh. Right. Just think oh, about yeah. the cool things you could do with that. Oh my God, I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> now, this, okay, this, well, I, I did a little better on this, but I still had obviously too much on the bottom. I used the gel medium. Hmm. Here, Laura, I don't know if you can spotlight me for just a second. Yeah, I'll spotlight you. I haven't done, I've only done one alcohol ink, but this is not alcohol ink that I'm showing you, but I do want to show you is, if you can see it, using. Oh, it's your background's showing through. Oh. But this is metal using metallics. It's oh yeah, really doesn't do it any justice. No. But when I use the metallics, I always do it on black. Uh, yeah, ah. they do show up better on. Yeah, so like if you're using metallic, 
Um, if you're using metallic alcohol you may have to mix in a little bit of the snow cat with it. Yeah. To show up on black, but. You can unspotlight me now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have, I have lost medium in a jar. So how do I know how much to put? You just need a tiny bit, Vera. I don't know. Do you, how do you apply it? If you have a if you have a palette knife like this one, yep. Just like tip of a palette knife. The very tip. Of a knife. Just like I a, just use a, a pops. A, what do you call it? Yeah. A, a popsicle stick. Yeah. I have a palette. presser. Like I don't even know like what measuring device you would use to measure. <laughs> it yeah. also depends on the, your plate too. But you don't want a whole lot. But then do I brayer it too? Oops. Brayer it, yes. You have to brayer it because it has to completely cover the whole entire plate. Uh, gotcha, right. A question? Yes. Can you, say, can you demonstrate or tell us how you use your gel papers in your art? So we get this question every single time. So the number <laughs> one answer is collage. So a lot of times you can use it for collage. You can use it for... Um, card making for backgrounds for card making. Um, I like to, and I don't have an example here, I like to doodle on top of them. Mm. Like use them as backgrounds and do, do and use whatever, especially alcohol ink ones. Let me see, one of the ones that I created before that I want to show, let's see if I can find it, is we're gonna do one like this. This one right here I did earlier. So like you have these perfect little circles that are like just screaming out to be doodled on. Mm -hmm. um and so you can you can doodle use posca pins are great for that or oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> sorry <laughs> what no, this, one, this one actually came out kind of neat all right let's let's see it what is spot one she had an epiphany oh here it is no the other one yeah i know i see you don't want to see me. oh this yeah nice. oh this I, that came out I really cool. Swirly stuff, swirly stuff with alcohol inks. And yeah. then I used I used this. This is the golden oh. medium. It works really good. The fluid, okay. Yeah. That's, it, yeah, that's what I'm using, the gloss medium. So. Yeah. Yeah. Acrylic fluid. It yeah, works. I like to use the, the Liquitex matte medium that's fluid too. Um, that's what I have that I love. I'm going to tell you that. the end of this and when we talk about how we're going to clean up afterwards. Oh. The only thing that I caution with the medium, the gel medium and the gloss medium on the on the plates is don't you have to clean it afterwards. It's sticky, yeah. No, it will ruin your plate. Um, I used it on one of my plates before and I forgot to clean it afterwards. And I came back the next day and my plate was hard on top. And yeah, because it was like blue. Yeah. I tried conditioning it with the baby oil and conditioning it and washing it with Dawn. I tried everything, nothing. It hardened. It was no good. So if anybody has any solutions to that happening, but that's only because I, and the only thing I had done is I had used matte medium and I didn't clean it off properly. So do you clean it with the baby wipes or alcohol um, or? Yeah. So I'll, 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 I'll get to that. But what I, what I do is I take alcohol and a paper towel and clean off when I've, when I've been working with alcohol ink. Uh -huh. um, and then I take baby wipes after that and wipe again. And then I take it to the sink and I wash it with Dawn. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then I condition it with baby oil. Wow. <laughs> after, because after an alcohol ink session, that's, and I also use, have one gel plate that I use for my alcohol. So if you're right. joining me later on in, in this conversation, one of the first things I said is I have a dedicated gel plate that I use only for alcohol inks because it stains it. Um, but otherwise it works great. And it, as long as you take care of it and, and clean it afterwards, you won't run into what I ran into. So that's the only thing I have to say about the, um, the mediums on top, the gel medium and the, um, and the matte medium is actually what did it. It was a Liquitex um, liquid matte medium. And I just didn't clean it up and I was ready the next day. It was just hard. I could still use the other side, but that one side was just hard as if it, it lost all of its grab. You know what I mean? That, like mm. that suction that it has, it lost it all. So. <clears throat> Vera, you got a gorgeous comment. 
What's that? You got a gorgeous comment on your. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> Okay, so this next technique is one of my favorites to do with alcohol inks, just because I love to see the alcohol inks blossom and do their thing. Um, so I am going to use, again, I'm going to use um, dandelion and glazier. And you I'm scooch gonna... your uh, plate up just a little bit? Yeah. There you go. I'm actually going to rock, rock it here in a second. So I'm putting a decent amount on here. And... Um, One, so I did one side I did was um, the dandelion, the other side here, I'm doing it with the um, glacier. I'm just going to clean it over here, clean my brayer off in between. It's going to take a little bit of time for this to, um, to dry, but that's, I want it to be kind of thick because I want to get the effect that I want to get from this. And I can while do wet. I, while can, do, I can do manipulations while it's wet. Two, uh, two things, a comment and a question. Okay. Bonnie cleans her plate. She uses a heavy, but when she uses a heavy body acrylic, she will use, I'm sorry, heavy body acrylic and heavy weight watercolor paper and then pull it the next day. So she will leave the paper on the plate. Pull on it and then pull it. Okay. Yeah, because pull it the have next it day. Those. That's that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and that way all of it soaks up into the paper throughout the night. And a question is what kind of brush were you pouncing the ink with? Um, this is a this is just a regular round. This is a number five round. What about uh, the other one? I think you were pouncing um, maybe with an old brush. Round brush. Uh, I think this, this is I think this is the only brush uh, I, was I think Vera was using one of those deer foot. I, I was That's just going to so. ask if it, the, the one I was using on, with the, oh. green, the deer foot brush. Which um, I love. Thank you, Vera. Are, I love the deer foot brush. It's my favorite. I love it, it for is, texture. It really yeah. does give great texture. Yes. Especially for foliage, which is sort of what mm -hmm. I'm trying to sort of do. <laughs> well, yeah, excellent. So, so I'm just tapping in with the wet brush here. But my, my favorite thing is when you start, when, once it gets dry, is that I use, I, this is just a regular wooden block. I put some Velcro on here and I, and, and I attach some felt to the top of it. You can buy these applicators. Or, um, Tim Holtz has um, the applicators that you can use as well. Um, but um, I ended up buying, making my own and I actually made this one uh, eight or nine years ago and I still use it. Um, and it's just basically a wooden block I got at Michael's. I put some Velcro on it and then I, I cut my own felt. Um, yeah. I buy the felt in, in, roll, in rolls at the fabric store because this type of felt is more dense and it doesn't leave fibers in the art, um, which is really frustrating. So I'm actually Great tip. a little bit of alcohol on my um, block here. And I'm actually going to cap it off on my paper towel just a little bit so it's not sopping wet. And then I take it and I'm just going to tap it around. Talking about foliage, this is a great way to make foliage. But see, I'm just tapping it around. And this is one of my favorite techniques to create really neat, interesting texture on gel plate. And so now I did it into the blue area and I still, now it lifted up some of that blue alcohol ink into the uh, felt. And now I'm going to tap it over into the yellow to kind of, pull some of that darker color down into the yellow. Just some fun interest. And the more you tap, the more texture you get. You also, the, dry, the drier the felt is, the smaller the, the bubbles that it creates. You put, if it's super wet, it's gonna make bigger bubbles. And as it dries, you can keep tapping over it until you get the texture that you're looking for. And I'm gonna use the gloss medium to pull it. And believe it or not, it's already pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead with this, just a drop. 
Now we take our broom and go over the whole thing so that it's all wet. Like I said, this is my this is one of my favorite techniques of alcoholing. Just because I love, love, love the texture you get from it. And the, with the lighting, you can't really see the vibrancy of it, but it's pretty vibrant. Oh, that looks like the ocean scene right there. Is it a glacier yeah. and a yellow, or is it just glacier? This is glacier and dandelion. So what I did was I just packed the alcohol into the glacier, and then I actually pulled some of that down over the dandelion. Ah. Yeah. So if you went in this and did something like this with a little more intention than I'm doing tonight, you could have a background to then come and like put your details and you'll have a whole piece of art ready to, to either make prints or sell or, you know, frame it. I, I always like to um, show how cool these prints look when you put a frame around them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I you know, the I, see Vera, I see Vera doing that for her next beach scene. Right. Alcohol ink kind of does its own, like, you know, thing. You know. Itchy keen. <laughs> All right. So the next thing I have on my list to show you, let's see. Well, that's actually very beautiful as a comment. So cool. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and wait till you do them. They're so, so satisfying and fun. It just really is. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to use um, a stencil. And the way you use stencils with alcohol inks are a little tricky and different. Um, a lot of times when we do acrylic, we'll like put the acrylic down, we'll put a stencil, we'll pull some, we'll do layers and that sort of thing. Um, but with alcohol ink, it doesn't really work so well that way. So what I like to do and what I found works best when you're working with stencils. And any of you who have done some experimenting on your own, feel free to chime in on your experience. Um, but I like to take a stencil that's gonna cover the whole thing. And before I put anything on the plate, I like to lay it down where I want it. Ooh, I have stencils. I, I have neat stencils cut out, like cutouts from my jewelry making. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and the only thing you want to make sure that they are that they are they're kind of uh, bonded to the plate a little bit. Um, just alcohol ink is going to run underneath when you drop it on it, but um, if you have it, you know, sort of adhered, you can actually run a clean brayer over it like this um, to make sure it's sort of you know ad adhere there, and then you just come in and drop some ink. And this time I'm going to um, still use my dandelion and glazer. I'm trying to keep my palette simple for this presentation tonight. So I haven't pulled out a whole lot of other colors, but I'm just dropping some ink, different amounts on here. And it's kind of interesting because this, <laughs> this stencil has some alcohol ink from a previous pool that like with orange. So I think that's going to end up helping me out and make some really interesting effects. Could you pounce, use a pouncer for more control? That's what I'm going, yeah, you can use a pouncer. So if you wanted this like I had, you could put it on here and pounce it on. And actually that's what I'm kind of going to do is take my pouncer and move around what I put on here. And I um, Excellent. lift it off and put a, a clean felt on here as I get it. So I don't contaminate the dandelion here at the bottom. I could, you can do bounce back and forth where they blend so that you get that gradient blend a little bit. Okay, so the only thing about this too is you kind of have to wait and let it dry because you don't want to lift that um, 
You don't want to lift your stencil until it's dry. So while I'm waiting for mine to dry, does anyone want to show anything that they have or that they're doing? <laughs> no. uh, I no. Are, no. Yes, I'm okay, I'm, I'll show you, Terry. Let me see what you got. So Ooh. one of them that I did that I thought was really fun. That's beautiful. Uh, I did it with but. clear. You're, and uh, Bonnie, you're right. The clear does give me much better colors. Yeah. Uh, and this one I wasn't using. For some reason, I used monsoon instead of glacier. So it didn't really look that good. But I think it might make a really interesting doodle thing with like a wall, look like a wall and flowers. So. Oh, absolutely. I like that color combo. Yeah, um, it's a fun scene with um, coral, and it looks kind of cool. Yeah, this is one soon, and I think Dijon. Yeah. Oh, love Dijon. Yeah, I love the Dijon. So you I'm having that one that's kind of appeals to me. I like it. Yeah, so do I. I, though I usually do really bright things. It it is. It was very appealing. So. Bonnie says, my, oh my, Terry, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. So I did something interesting. I, I, I did a, um, a poll okay. and it didn't really, it didn't work. You know, it was the same old thing. Like I did too much. So then I sprayed it with alcohol to kind of clean it. But instead of cleaning it, I just put paper. I kept putting, you know, paper down. And then until it was almost dry, and then I did a pull, and it actually came wow. out pretty good. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think what I need to do is make sure I have enough ink on there, because I did a really thin layer of um, of white, but I think of the acrylic, but I, I don't think I had enough ink on there. Yeah, so, so you maybe, I, maybe want to make sure that you have the whole plate covered with ink. And that's why you'll see me doing the br the brayer thing. Huh? Right, because what ended up happening is by out putting the alcohol on, I reactivated the whole thing. Right, right. Yeah, so it worked better. Okay. You got a comment of love that one. <laughs> <laughs> love it. So I got impatient and hit mine too quickly, and I can see why you don't want to do that, Laurie. <laughs> yeah. Claire, how are you doing? Um, I've had a lovely time. <laughs> but because I made my own um alcohol inks, uh -huh. they've they've not looked like what you lot have been <laughs> producing. So <laughs> um, and this is how I made them. Okay, I just got normal ink and put put in rubbing alcohol okay, yes. from the chemist mm -hmm. and I put maybe um I put them in these little containers and right. I put maybe that much alcohol and then the same amount of ink maybe I've put too much in um I need to dilute it a bit but I've got some really good things that I've done so it's Ooh. sort of like oh. I'm layering on top of each other I've got did you just drip those onto the plate? Yeah, so I dripped them. And then if you, if I put it closer, you can it's see so that nice and round. colors, oh, beautiful. colors within colors. So it looks more like um, when you do, um, you lift off, off water. What's yeah. that called? Marbling. <laughs> Paper marbling. <laughs> um, and then I've got some really lovely layers. So I've, oh, I've got a few different layers in there and i always love using toilet rolls for circles Art making yes yeah i love love circles <laughs> then i've yeah. done some drips so i've lifted up my jelly print and let let it sort of drip yes. a bit yes yes um and then i did a Ooh. mask with my mask so i've used like little bits of paper and then I made a, like a little mask ready to put mm -hmm. sort of some sort of flower at the top here to draw on top later. Oh, I like Beautiful. that idea. Oh. I like the masking idea. That's a yeah, good... that's a great idea. That's beautiful. That would be a good way to 
that would be a good way to recycle plastic packaging, cutting the oh, sheet yeah. plastic. Oh, good Definitely. idea. Yeah, I love, I love these things. We, we get so much inspiration and ideas from them. Well, thanks, yeah. thanks for sharing. <laughs> All right, so I think we're ready to go back. I think mine is probably dry and we can do the reveal here. Take my out there so you can see all the patterns oh, here. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, and, and then I can come, I'm gonna come back. I'm just gonna use the gloss medium with it. I covered my entire plate with a thin coat. That was the um, the clear. Yeah, that's the gloss medium. Okay. And um, now we're ready to do a pull on this one. <laughs> Let's see. I want to see. <laughs> there. <laughs> that was Terry pretending to be. Oh, it was. <laughs> You must be loving what she did. It looks cool, right, Terry? Yep. There we go. Oh, oh wow. yeah. That is great. How fun. So, doing this, so I want to do another one of these with a different stencil and then make it a, um, I want to make it a, um, a layer on top of one of the other ones that we've done. So that's like doodle mania right there. Oh, you yeah. Know. I know, right? This is like totally like, yeah. Let me get that. Let me get the sharp, the um, either the sharpies or the yeah. or Oscar the pens or something. Pens yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mine pulled really well too. After I mean, it has the places where it ran because I was silly and pulled it up too fast, but otherwise it did a really good job of pulling off. So let's see. So this one I did was one of the first ones I I did, and it's kind of plain. Right. So I think what I want to do is I want to do a layer. Um, and if you're just working with alcohol ink on, on a, a non-porous sur surface, um, you can't really put alcohol ink on alcohol ink. But when you're doing a gel plate, you can do layers. And so I'm going to take another stencil. Oh, I love that stencil. I know. I love Ooh, this stencil yeah. too. It's like one of my favorites. And I'm going to just go over it and make sure it's stuck. So I, I um, actually, it doesn't cover my whole plate. So I'm only going to get a portion of it, but I'm just going to do a portion of it and see what we get here. Um, so I can use the technique that Pam was talking about where you put, you just put some of the ink on here. I think that's what I'm going to do here. Oh, and, and there is a question about what stencil is that? Do you know? I can look it up and tell you it's a stencil girl stencil. Okay. I will look it up and I can, I will share the link. Um, on you on the YouTube, um, I got it so long ago, but I can still figure out where I, where I got it. Great. But I'm pretty sure it's a simple girl. I love how organic it is, and you know, or, with alcohol ink being organic, you know, that's just goes hand in hand with it. Mm -hmm. So I just did certain areas. I didn't do the entire um, play. Right. The entire. I didn't do that entire thing. Um, just because I want to try to get in a layer. So I'm going to let that sit and dry. It won't take long because I didn't pour ink on it, so it's not too thick. I just pounced it on, um, so it's not as thick. Um, but I'm going to let that dry before I pull the stencil off. Anybody else work with stencils and alcohol ink before? Um, Bonnie, you, you're watching, and I know that you have done I, this. I'm trying right now. The one and only oh. one I did, I actually dropped it on just like we do on Yupo and used the Tim Holtz, um, the blower that you showed earlier. Okay. But I found to show the flower even better, I had to mix it with the snow cap. So I would drop right. a drop of blue or a drop of purple and then put the snow cap in it and just blow it out just like I do on Yupo. And it lifted beautifully after I let it dry. So I found these new, these kind of, they're called foamies. I don't know if you've heard of these. Yes. I make yes. my own art foamies. Yeah, you yes. can make your own. Yeah, you're so you're so good at uh, doing all that. Of course, I went and spent 
a ridiculous amount of money for them. Um, <laughs> but I got them mainly for acrylics because I like the stamping instead in, in addition to stencils. And then I just tried them on the alcohol ink. You know, that sunflower I did the other day, I used, um, I used a foamy for like the whole background. And, it, you know, it really gave it this cool foliage look to it. Oh. Um, so I'm just using some now. So we'll see what happens. And to answer your question, Lori, Bonnie said, first of all, great tip about the pouncing. But yes, I have. She drops it, not pounce it. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. So this is one of my art foamies. So the, uh, real simple. Here's what I do. I go to the um, craft store and in the kids craft section. Oh yeah, yeah. They always have the sticker ones. <laughs> I yep. get the, all the different patterns and stuff. They have so many, and they're so inexpensive. And I get pieces of cardboard and just stick them to them, and then I can use them as my mark making tools. I did do a couple of those and then I don't know what I saw something that for you know my acrylic painting and I just saw this and it, then I found out it was a foamy and I just fell in love with them so I probably didn't need to spend the money but oh yeah no there they I've seen there I think there's even a website on artfoamies.com yeah it is that's where I got them yeah, yeah. And, and 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 they're awesome they're I mean they have some really nice ones oh they yeah they're on rollers like this so you roll them and that's what I like, like to rollers Right. Vera, would your Cricut maker cut foam? Um, it depends on how thick it is. You mean like those? Um, These are really thick. These are like. Not, uh, not the thick one like Eva has, but the, the thin fun foam sheets that you uh, put the craft oh, oh, for. I know what you're talking about. Maybe with the knife blade, that would be something to experiment with. Or maybe I could ask in one of the Cricut groups. Yeah, I just wonder if it would cut it because that would just be endless possibilities. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thicker, oh, God. Things like you gonna... definitely need the, the knife blade for. I mean, like heavy you bow, but yeah. you know, going over it like, you know, seven or eight times is just too much. So um, I've been saying, actually, you know what works great on the Cricut, which I'm shocked is the photo paper it works really great oh nice but you can't I, touch the photo paper to the to the gel plate oh that's true. True. don't do that's that true. don't do that i'm talking i'm the, all right since i'm gonna layer this, i'm gonna use like a clear gloss medium um so that you can see through the layers if i use white it's just gonna cover it up it would just cover right. up my background but i'm gonna use clear medium to do the pool so i'm gonna Use this. This was what one of the first ones we did tonight. I'm just gonna lay it right back on top of the plate. And I'm gonna take my baron, make good contact with it. I'm making a mess, but that's good. And this is what a layer looks like. Oh, wow, very Ooh. nice. So yeah. you can get really cool if you have a bunch of stencils and you can do a bunch of different layers and that gloss medium. And, and, and also I'm doing this on regular like copy paper just because I'm doing a bunch of is demo purposes. If I wanted to do it on like a mixed media paper or something, I could do that. I'll tell you another um, substrate that works really great is um, deli paper. Yes. Oh yeah. Thin yeah. and translucent, and it works great in collage. So you can do the same thing with that. But what I wanted to point out was, is as you start to build it up layers, it gets more rigid because as the acrylic dries, it gets more rigid. Um, so you're. Vera, you're not making a mess. You're making a background. Actually, <laughs> mess is very good for stress. Okay, so I'm learning a new technique that I'm sure is probably not part of the. I still had trouble pulling again. <laughs> and so then I sprayed some alcohol on it. And yep. then I started pulling. Yep. I have oh, like, but look what I happened. So I'm it actually is <laughs> it's different. That's beautiful. Uh, it's different, but cool. It works. While, so I'm gonna while Eva is spotlighted, it. while she's oh. spotlighted, there was a question to see uh your foamy. Oh, okay. Me up close. Oh, this is one of my foamies. 
Ah, very pretty. Yes, and then really there's nice some, design in there. Yeah, and this one I love because this is great for, I don't know, it's kind of dark, I know. It's kind of a little like floral leafy Oh, thing. yeah. Tilt it a little bit so you can, so we can sort of see the. I think my lighting here that? is terrible. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There so you go. go. There you go. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. That I used I like when I was one. making my sunflowers. Yeah, it's like not easy to make that kind yourself. You're you're sitting and you're you have exacto blade or whatever and cutting yeah. it. Yeah. So, in the, having that level of detail, those those are nice. And someone so, said, Eva, that your so pool looks what, like wildflowers. I mean, flowers. it doesn't the whole thing, but this is, to me, this is gorgeous to use in a collage. That is. Or something, it is. You know? yeah. Someone says it looks like wildflowers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's an idea. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. That's a good oh. color combination. I have a few more things to show. Um, one of the first things. Well, I'm sorry, what was that? Someone say Sierra, highlight my okay. Oh no. Nice. Oh look at that. Look at that. Right. So, nice. No, I just want to show you. Like I I use this. This I think was just regular UFO because I'm looking at the top. I think I, I tore it out of a UFO pad. And I just cut out ovals for my little tiny, you know, painted pendants. And that's my substrate. I glue it into the bezel. So it, it turned out to be like a really neat stencil. It is yes, just it something laying around. So You're negative. Like, See there, you can't throw anything away. <laughs> ever throw away. Uh, yeah. um, another <laughs> question, Lori, when you get a minute. Um, okay. Well, Lori, uh, Lori, will you post links for the tools you are using? I have never seen this art before, and I love the possibilities. Oh, yeah. They're, they're endless. <laughs> so, <laughs> and someone also says, thank you for everybody for sharing. They love that. And Eva, that's beautiful. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Pam, I will definitely do that. So you have it. Um, do I have a couple more techniques to show? Um, they're not earth shattering techniques. Well, one of them might be, but we'll see. But before I do that, talking about mark making, I bought these little cookie rollers. Uh huh. Oh, I've been, I've been loving it. And they were great for mark making. Okay, I need to get one with a skull print so that I can make a skull plate. <laughs> I'm sure it exists. Just go to Amazon and like got one. <laughs> these cookie rollers and so cool and they make really neat um marks just had to say you have just had to put that out there so working with the stencils and alcoholic ink i think is really cool because i think you can create a lot of different things especially when you go into and you start doing layering um the layering is so cool um the next thing i just want to show you markers so Ooh, yeah. markers like sharpies and um Oh, what are all the brands? And Spectrum I Noir. use Spectrum Noir, yeah. Copic's probably like um, a, a really a really good one. You can get inexpensive ones even on on um, or, um, Amazon. There's a lot of brands. Prismacolor. There's a lot of them, but they're alcohol-based markers is what I'm talking about. You could use watercolor markers too, to be honest, because you and I get the same effect that we're showing here, but you can you can use, put watercolor markers on a plate and create all kinds of doodles and designs and do a pull just like we're doing today. Um, it works very, very similar. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to just paint my plate, plate with the marker. And all I'm doing here is just showing that you can use markers. Oh, wow. And you can draw with markers and whatever you yeah. want. Um, so I'm just going with my marker and just going across and just, won't be earth shattering or anything because I'm not well, doing anything. while you're coloring Eva yes. uh, two questions where are the foamies sold or and or what is the name of the foamy site it's artfoamies.com that's where I bought them that's the site I got it I'm gonna wrote it is it IES or with a Y IES 
Got it. So it's A R T F O A M I E S dot com. Got it. Thank you. Awesome. So and I added a little bit more. This is now a full page. I got it. Yay. <laughs> There you go. If you use same colors, you can you can take a whole big page and like fill up layers in different areas. Yeah. Yeah. So now, how do you, you can do layers by if you uh, do another page, whatever the same colors like you said, and then use the gloss or the gel like medium. A clear medium. Okay. Uh, between it, like gloss medium, a uh, matte medium. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I need to clean my plate. Uh, oh dear, just made a mess. And Vera, you got to let us know every time you've got one done because we have some fans that want to see your work. <laughs> Who? Just fans. Just sent a question. Can we see? Oh, Vera fan. So Vera fan. It's a, little, it's a me. The low you. Oh, come on. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight you, Vera. Why? <laughs> so she's doing it. You're doing the markers too. Okay. So you're I'm going gonna to do to markers to too. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing markers too. But did you see the one that I did earlier? I just. No, that's cool. I pound screens and then I just went back in with a brush with. Um, uh, there was some oh. magenta for the gumball and the ember and a little yellow. And I, I like the gloss medium. Like I'm not using white anymore. Boo hiss. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like the gloss medium too. So yeah, gloss medium's nice. So you Sorry. um Sorry. also pounce like that, Vera, and then then use markers too to mark in you know the flowers in there. Yeah. And a That's couple more questions do. came up, flowers. Lori. Okay. I have a bunch of stamping up stamps. Will those work as well? Yes, so I have a few, I have a few stamps here. Um, you have to do it kind of when the alcohol is wet because if they don't lift very well on alcohol. Yeah. Or you can put your medium down and then do it on top of the medium. That kind of works. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So this, I'll use white for this one because I think it works best on white. And also someone asked, can you use Sharpie markers? Yes, Sharpie markers are alcohol-based, so you could definitely use those. Um, just know that, that they will stain your plate. Um, so you make sure you, you have, if you want to start using the alcohol inks and alcohol markers on plates, that you may want to have a dedicated plate um, for that purpose, unless you don't mind working on yellowed or colored plates. Yeah, mine is totally yellow and it's, it's a brand new plate. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I mean, mine is brand new tonight. It is now totally stained yellow. Yeah. Well, Laurie started us out with dandelion. And that was the That's thing. right. That was the problem. I said, it's okay. Like, get it over. Okay. <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> I love the dandelion, though. It's a great color. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead marker on there and then I spritz it with alcohol so that I could get like that watery sort of effect. And I'm just going to let that dry and then when I come over it with my um, titanium white acrylic, I'll put a few um, stamps in it so we can see what that looks like. And acrylic inks question, can acrylic inks be used for these techniques? Yes, actually m most of, yeah. Well, that's so Gel plates mostly used with acrylic inks. Uh, yes. Um, or, I'm sorry, acrylic paints. You're talking about acrylic inks. Yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't use an acrylic ink. It might right. not behave the same way. It's not going to have the alcohol ink has, is unique because it interacts with alcohol as it, it kind of reactivates. So it acts a little different. Um, but the acrylic inks, you're going to get a, a different effect with it. Um, you may not be as satisfied with it, but they will work. I mean, it's more like acrylic paint. It's just more right. fluid. Exactly. Yeah. I love acrylic. I don't know what I'm doing. I love doing acrylic inks and alcohol inks together because if you have two colors that um, actually will turn to mud, if you use one acrylic and one alcohol, it doesn't happen. Oh, um, so, I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah. So when I've like made flowers or something, and then I want to put some 
green stems, if I use acrylic ink for the green, mm -hmm. it yeah. really works. You know, it, it doesn't turn everything else to mud. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, go ahead. Do you need to move on? Yeah, I'm just going to, um, just real quick, you go ahead and talk if you want while I'm doing this. Okay. I'm doing a Vera right now. I'm doing a wildflower <laughs> scene. Um, a comment yeah, yeah, it's here. It's uh, a Vera. Collage, collage appeals to me, but I've never really done it. Can this group do a Zoom with folks sharing their collage? Oh, I like, I love collage. Or can someone recommend a good group to join? Well, the mixed media mad group is mixed media and there's a lot of collage work on there. Yeah. Uh, but I think, yeah, doing a, doing a zoom on collage would be awesome. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah we'll do that. That'd be fun. And the only thing about collage is you have to take a long time for the matte medium to dry. Oh, so I just applied the, some white titanium white for this one. Remember this is the one I did with markers where I just co colored straight across with the markers. But I'm going to take my stamp and stamp into it straight up and down. And that will put the designs in there. So remember when I pressed directly onto the alcohol ink, it wouldn't, it wouldn't lift. But as soon as I put that acrylic down, it will. And you can use matte. Um, you can use medium if you want. I like to do the white so I can see where I'm stamping a little bit better. Yeah, I used the matte medium and I can see this, it did lift it up, but I couldn't see it when I did it originally. Right. That's, that's why I decided to use the titanium white in this case. Yeah. Very interesting. Markers were very interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, think about the possibilities, right? Yeah. I mean, you could do a whole painting on it, you know? There's yeah. lots of... So that's what it looks like. You can use stamps for this. That's oh, what it cute. looks like your stamp. So that's, that's, can be fun, especially if you have some really cool stamps. Yeah. I just put some words in mine, kind of where the flowers were, but it's just, it is, it's a little different using the markers because the lines are more distinct, at least for mine it is. Oh, I used it. And one of the things that left a little bit of that uh, stamp on my um, plate a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see yeah. it a little bit. Oh, yeah. You can see it. There you I'm going to leave it there and see what we get because I want to show you one more thing. So, Bummer. somebody asked me a while back when we did the image transfers could you do in, um, alcohol ink on? alcohol ink image transfer and the answer is yes you can so I figured I'd do one and hopefully it'll come out the first time so what I'm going to do is I printed out these little spring printouts that I have on the you can download these on the gel collage website um but they have to be done on a laser, right, Laurie? Yes, you, you can make your own, but you have to print it on a laser printer or copy it on a, on a um, printer that, uh, or copy machine that's like uh, toner based. Right. Um, if you do inkjet, inkjet, the inkjet soaks the ink in and it doesn't fit on top, so you can't have that resist that import it for gel uh, for image transfer. So I'm going to take this. This is another brayer. I put Mars Black down, and I'm going to have a very, very thin coat of this Mars Black on my gel plate. I'm going to make sure it's completely covered up. Then I'm going to take my piece here, and I'm going to place it on the plate. And then I'm going to take the brayer just really lightly, one pass, and then lift it up, and it leaves an image on the gel <laughs> image transfer. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let that dry for just, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna see what everyone else is doing. Ah. Any, oh, Vera's doing a reveal. Hold on, spotlight. Ah, oh, cool. Go slower. Oh, uh, so cool. Vera, what did you do? 
I don't oh, know. Cool. <laughs> oh, it's come good. on. You got some really nice um, marbling going on. Okay, so I did sort of a sort of a gradient. Like I did um, markers. I just like dabbed the markers and then I should have just left it and I should have just pulled it as it was, but I I threw the stencil over it and I sprayed. Okay. <laughs> then, like it didn't really do much. <laughs> oh, okay. you can you can see it. it yeah, it's cool. It's like it's underneath. Yeah. Yeah, but the stencil part you can't really see as much. I mean, you can and see. And someone says, bit. "Vera, that's awesome." Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what, what it is, but it's. it's <laughs> Again, it's a background. <laughs> yeah. Um, Oh, you'll make a, you make some cool jewelry out of that, Vera. I was actually thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine, um, I'm still, okay. I was trying to do the wildflowers. It didn't work, but it, I made a pretty background. It says same colors that I had before. Oh, nice. So yeah. I, uh, yeah, I just kind of, I did a more dropping and then I did use the, um, I did use my uh, Spectrum Noir, so. Okay. Yeah. To use the marker to make it. That's cool. Yeah. And Terry, let's see where you are. Here I am. Oh, and um, cool. I used the markers too. And I just kind of doodled with them. And then I spritzed it all. And then I put some stamping in here. And the stamp just came out as white. So I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. So it was fun. <laughs> So I did, I was challenged again because I wasn't, I'm not used to using the markers and I really didn't know what color they were. And on the orange, every, on the yellow thing, everything was coming out as green. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <probably. Right. laughs> so it, it is like the gift of whatever. And my other one, my stencil worked out, I thought really well. Oh, that's oh. Cool. Ooh, oh I yeah. like it. It was good too, but I do really like uh, the tip of using the uh, with the alcohol inks, using the matte medium instead of the white because it does give much brighter, brighter colors. And it and, and also the layering is what I like the most about it. Yes, yeah. So I did a few layering, but they didn't really turn out very well. Um, I had done. Oh, even what I did with it. Oh, I did. I did this when I was bored. So I put a layer of a, this this um, stencil on top of it, but it didn't. Oh. You know, it's not really quite where I needed to be yet. You know, Terry, that these would make great backgrounds for some of those mixed media things you've been doing. Well, I have been, yeah, and I've been using a lot of my pools for the mixed media. Okay, yeah, do. I can totally see it looking, being great for that. Anybody yeah, else? It is. It's, it's a great background. It's a great start. It's a great beginning. And, um, and when I usually do the mixed media, I try to do it on Bristol paper that I've gessoed. Well, now this is just like it's already gessoed. So yeah. the ones I've done in cardstock, I have to do them in cardstock to do them in the mixed media, because otherwise it's the paper's too thin. Right. right. But um, yeah, it's been quite fun. Cool. The other thing that I've done with mixed media, like with, with those if making a collage, is putting it on a, um, a cradled panel or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Board and uh, that yeah. Kind of the tissue paper, I'm going to try that. That's a fun one, yeah. Oh, it's fabulous. Yeah. Because when you use it in collage, um, oh, yeah. it appears. Yeah. Okay, so right. this and one, I, I let the, it's all dry. So I'm just going to come in here and, and drop some alcohol ink on to, just on top of my image transfer. Okay, I'm laser printing something now. I need black acrylic, Lori. I'm sorry, what was that, Vera? I, I'm doing a laser print now. I need black acrylic, you said? Yeah. Yeah, black acrylic for the image core. And you have to also make sure that you have a super high contrast image. Okay. Okay, so 
I just put down some alcohol ink on this and I'm actually going to, and it, it, it did pull up a little bit of the acrylic um, cause it was, it was so wet, but um, not much, it still stayed there. So it's, it's okay. And I'm gonna spritz it a little bit just to add some texture to it. And so this is kind of the, the gel prolage technique with alcohol ink. And then we have to let that dry, which won't take long. And then I'll come back with the gloss medium and do a pull on it. Tracy says, thank you to all of your, all of you for sharing your talent, a special thank you to Lori for hosting and instructing this class. Oh, totally. The, the pleasure is all mine. I have so much, you can ask everyone. I have so much fun with you. <laughs> yeah, I do. I love doing them. But thanks for joining and watching and sticking with us. It's um, it's almost been two hours now. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you. Have, I mean, it's great that we're having fun. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, Absolutely. Fun. 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 I'm going to put down my my um, gloss medium. Hopefully, it's not too soon. Over the top. This it is, is funny how everything blue looks green on this now. Yeah. And I have to remember, no, it's not green. <laughs> Tweety Pete Tweety Pete says this is the best, all in capitals, art community, that. in my humble opinion. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> well, 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 when you create work. something, then you make sure that you share it in the share it in our um, community group on Facebook. Yes. Like Lori, what did I do wrong? I tried to do, um, I printed something. I just printed like black letters on my laser printer uh -huh. and then the black acrylic down. And then I laid the, the prints over it mm -hmm. and then I peeled it up and there's nothing on my plate. <laughs> well, I've okay. had that happen too. That here, happens. Right here, so go watch my gel collage videos on the channel, but yeah. But what you what you have to do because you have to do it exactly right or it won't work. You have okay. you put a very thin 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 layer, and and you do the tra transfer. You to do the transfer, you lay down your piece for. I mean, and you don't leave it there long at all, and you oh. make the brayer very light. Yeah. Go over the whole thing one time only, and then lift it up. Okay. You leave it there Try again. Long, if you leave it there long, all the black will soak into the paper. Yeah. Okay. You have to kind of be quick with it. A quick process. And I'm ready for the reveal on this one. Oh, oh wow. Ooh. So cool. Oh, oh that's super cool. That is. I love those words and everything. It's so neat. Yeah, and big, bold words work really, really well for this process. Great night yourself, Pam. What was, what was that? that? You said have a great night to all of us. I said have oh. a great night back. Oh, not me. Oh, no, yeah. that wasn't me. That was someone else. Another oh, Pam. Okay. I was reading. I was reading the comment. <laughs> okay, super, super thin black. Super, super thin. Yep. Super thin. Super thin. Super thin. All right, let me highlight you so I can see what you're doing. Okay, okay super thin, super thin. You're doing it with a paint or with the ink? You're doing it with paint, right? This is a uh, black acrylic, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. make sure the whole plate's covered. Super Cover it, thin. get rid of that yellow. Oh, it's lifting up now. Oh, it, it's getting it, dry. It's not gonna work then, it's gotten too dry. Go ahead, and, right. that, go ahead and lift that up. All right, let's yeah. try this. All right, so thin, 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 but fast, fast, fast. Right. All right. This is oh, where so golden open would come in handy. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so there you go. So lift off some of that extra that you have. Yeah. Out. It's already coming off, coming up. Yeah. Now lay it down very lightly. No, oh, no, 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 no. Oh. You, there, you just messed up. <laughs> you can't rub your hand over that. You have to just very lightly rub the brayer over it and then lift it. Okay, let's try it again. 
All yeah. Right, I gotta One more time. One more time. I mean, at least it's not like, you know, a huge investment of resources. It's just like a <laughs> fun, it's a fun thing, like fast and fun. All right. Yeah. Let's try this again. Oh, I need my printout. Hold on. That might be too much. Yeah, that's too much. Okay. And you got your printout ready? Right. Yep, yep. It just printed. Okay. Okay. What you're doing is perfect. Okay. 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 All right. Now, lay, it, lay it down. Take your brayer and very lightly go over one pass over it. Okay. Real lightly. Now lift okay. It up, lift it up. Oh, a little bit, a little bit, and it's yeah. not centered. So you also you also need to make sure. I didn't see your printout before. You need to make sure your printout is is um. It's pure um, black. You don't want. I, I, I need to probably tell you, it, it needs to be like, the contrast needs to be black for printing, which I think, I forget. It the, is there. You take the, you take a percentage of the black down, actually, if you're looking at the CMYK um, setting. But you did get somewhat of a transfer there. It, there's a little bit, yeah. So then what do I do? Just like drip some alcohol inks or a marker? Yeah, so drip some alcohol ink on top. Okay. But yeah, so that, that, that's the thing. A lot of people think you have to press that down and, and you don't want to do that. And you also kind of work, work quickly um, okay. with the black because what you're trying to do is get a resist. And it's, if it starts to soak into your paper, then you're not going to get the resist. And don't work it too much over your acrylic there because it's not 100% yeah. dry. I'm trying to like avoid that a little. Not yeah. too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can yeah, you, you have to let that acrylic dry to the alcohol ink. Yeah, well, no, the, the acrylic black that you put down. Yeah. You have to make sure that's completely dry. Oh, yeah. The alcohol ink isn't dry, though. No. So okay. Mom, could, could you technically, if the alcohol ink is wet, pull a wet print of the alcohol ink and will it pull up the um, acrylic too? I'm sorry, what was that, Terry? Since the alcohol ink is still wet, you can pull up a, if, if the alcohol ink's wet, you can pull a print of the wet alcohol ink, right? That's right, you can. That's what I've done. <laughs> but it, but it, won't, it won't necessarily lift if you got an image transfer down there. It's, okay, that was my question. Yeah, yes. it's not gonna, it's not gonna lift. It's not well. gonna lift the image transfer, right. okay. You need the, you, you need, need that the virgin, image. you need the virgin layer to yeah. lift everything. I just did one on tissue paper, on deli paper, whatever. Um, I'm still in the same color. It's like, it's the same old, but that's all right. Broken record, same colors. <laughs> White. Oh, let's, well, well, Vera's doing it. I'll look real quick. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Hold it up. Very nice. Yep. But I, I hate to say it. It looks like a bunch of floating boobs. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny because I have an alcohol ink piece that I made when I first started before I took any classes. And it's a bunch of bubbles and it's really cute, but I call it boobles because there were a couple of circles that look like boobs. So yeah, well, yeah. it looks like it's the perfect thing to, to, to use as a background for, yeah. you know, for some, something for cancer. Right, you're, 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 oh, yeah. You're, yeah, you're lifting off because you're too dry already. Yeah. yeah. If it starts lifting up, that means it's too dry. <laughs> See that. So now, should I put more white? No, I would just go ahead and do your, your lift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, yeah. I mean, I think you should try it again, though, on um, with the image transfer. Maybe not now, but on your own until, but you, you see, you, I, you, I, you saw exactly what you need to do. So you put it down. You don't rub it with your hands. You just go over it really light with the brayer and lift it right light off. Light with the brayer. And one of the other yeah, issues. Yeah, it was dry. It's not lifting. Yeah. Off. Yeah. One of the other issues, Vera, is that when you print a new laser print, it really yeah. has to sit for like 
four or five minutes to finish curing. That's true. Yeah. The laser laser actually lays on top of yeah. the, the piece of paper. Right. It's not like an inkjet. I so think that's it, where I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. So to try. <laughs> I think that okay. we're we're pretty much done. But real quick, I want to show you guys what I'm playing around with. This is what I'm going to be presenting at the Alcoholic Art Conference. Like, yeah, that uh, looks so cool. Ooh, ooh, I love that. It's um, it's metal embossing and then alcohol ink on it, and then I've mounted it to a cradle board. Oh God, uh, another thing to start. <laughs> And this is so fun and it works great with alcohol ink. So um, if you haven't checked out the conference, oh my gosh, Terry's going to be demonstrating. Vera's going to be demonstrating. I'll be there. Um, oh, I'm going. I checked it out. We have, yeah. a, we have a really amazing lineup. And then we're going to be doing an alcohol ink um, live live like this. Like, just like we did today, only we're, we're all going to be, everybody who joins in is going to be creating the same thing. You'll have a list of supplies. And we're all going to create it together. Is that going to be the spooky moon, the paint along? The spooky moon. Uh, yeah, the oh, moon? yeah. It's it's a yeah. It's harvest moon. Yeah. Harvest moon. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. The spooky witch is Sandy Sandy's one. Yeah. She, That's she, right. She, right. She yeah. Three, yeah. But we have some really cool. I mean, Vera's going to be doing an owl, right, Vera? Yep. Yep. Owl. Yeah. And, and Terry's doing lily ponds. I mean, go check it out. Go to the Alcoholic Art Community website. Um, I'll put a link again here. So if anybody wants to check it out, I'll put it in the in the in the chat on uh, YouTube here and also in the uh, comments. But um, yeah, that's going to be a blast. That's coming up in September, the beginning of September. So you have some time on that. Fabulous. Does anybody want to? Does anybody want to show what they have again? Okay, I'm doing just to clean my plate off. So yeah. I don't know what's so actually, yeah, that's what you reminded me. One last thing that I want to say before we say good night, good night is or good morning or good day. It's lunchtime for Claire. Yeah, um, <laughs> I want to talk about cleaning your plate a little bit. And um, let me just switch me back to me so you can see me instead of talking. Real quick question. Um, where would they find the uh, to, to play the video again? Is it on the mixed media page it under the be, event? It will be on this. The link I gave you to the mm. YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, is um you can rewatch it on YouTube. I'm gonna post the replay to the mixed media mag group. Okay. So those two places. So okay, really great. It'll take me a little time because it takes a while to render it. Yeah. Um, so that won't be there until tomorrow. But um, you'll be able to watch it immediately again on the YouTube using the YouTube link. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so let me switch over to me. All right. Hey. Hi. <laughs> so now you can see who's been talking all this time. Um, let's see. What did I want? Oh, so I want to talk about cleaning the, your plate afterwards. So um, I mentioned it during it. But so when you're done, you want to. Take, you can take a little bit of alcohol on a um, paper towel and clean it off and then make a wet a wet wipe and wipe it down. But the, I always take mine to the sink and I use like dish soap to clean yeah. both sides. Oh, that's really good idea. Good. And then when you're done with that, um, you want to condition it. Um, and you, you can condition it by using um, baby oil. So and if you don't I, have baby, baby oil, oil, like olive oil or something? Um, I don't know if I baby what do i do it, i mean i don't know about the olive oil but i do know that baby oil is what i've always heard recommended that's what i use and i just rub the out the the baby oil on it to condition it and then i just store it away a little damp with the baby oil i lift some of it off um but that and then put it away until i'm ready to use it again but that's all i do for that okay is it made no babies yeah we don't have babies no baby oil <laughs> Yeah, I use baby oil for my legs. <laughs> Is that too much information? <laughs> no. Yeah, TMI. It's all girls here. You know, I'll use baby powder in my gel lifts, and I love the smell of it. I'm always taking my lifts later and smelling them. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> you use baby powder in a gel lift? I do. 
What was that? Demo, demo. We need a demo. Coffee grinds for textured, all kinds of stuff. Oh, really? Ah. Oh. Salt is a good one too, right? So, yeah. This is not the best, but I actually, I use the baby powder to get a rust technique because I'll use orange, reds, and yellows, and I'll put them in between the baby powder. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, again, I don't know if you want to hit me again, but again, yeah, my background might interfere. Definitely want to see it because I've seen you play, post these and they're so nice. Looks like I can't. Oh, but always see your background. Oh, uh, yeah, your background's nasty. I know, I'm sorry. Uh I don't know how to move so that it's ah. Uh. Well, maybe post a picture on the on the um. Group. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, it looks like rust can. can. It yeah, like it looks like rust, and it feels it it feels gritty like rust. Cool. But it does smell good. I like that. It smells, like <laughs> it smells like babies. Well, it does smell like babies. Pam is the queen of mixed media hacks. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Well, maybe we could do a, a, a short Zoom at some point and do a play along and make you some guys rusty paper. I'm game. I'll set yeah. it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I'm going to say good night to everyone. Um, this was fun. I hope that um, you. Oh, it's a fun. Yeah, it was great. I can't wait to see what you experiment with. Be sure to post them in the Mixed Media Mad Crazy About Mixed Media group on Facebook so we can see what you've done. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hey, this is someone. What's that? Good night, good night everyone. Good night. Good night.